I wasn't surprised by the diagnosis. I'd been expecting it. My mother died of cancer, and my younger sister died of cancer. I'd gone in for a physical, just a standard routine physical, and the lab work came back, and I was actually pretty excited because everything looked really good. I did, however, have an elevated PSA. And after our discussion about the elevation of the PSA, we went ahead and scheduled an ultrasound and biopsy of the prostate. The results of the biopsy were that I had cancer. It's always a somewhat difficult conversation to notify somebody that they have cancer. Um, I tell them that this cancer is curative and that we have a number of options with limited side effects that will uh, give them a prolonged life and uh, cure them of their cancer. My urologist suggested that I attend something called Cancer Clinic. It's an educational process that they have for cancer patients and their families. I met Dr. Epstein there and he told me about prostatectomy and what it would mean what the side effects could be. When Michael first presented, he had many different options. Uh, luckily, he had early disease and though we could offer radiotherapy as a definitive treatment, the survival rate for prostate cancer, whether surgery or radiation therapy are quite similar, uh, but the side effect profiles are different. We rarely see urinary incontinence with our patients with radiotherapy. Uh, since there's no surgery, it tends to be painless. And during the six to eight week period of daily radiation therapy treatments, most of our patients, frankly, are able to continue to work uh, and lead a fairly normal life. And they also talk, both of them, about watchful waiting. It turns out that my cancer wasn't the kind that required immediate decision on my part. After a lot of thought, I decided that radiation therapy was the best thing for me because it was the least invasive. It had a survival rate that was virtually identical with prostatectomy. And it was something that I knew that I could tolerate and be happy with. We have many different tools to allow us to uh, bend the radiation beam in, in a conformal way and it surrounds the prostate in sort of a saran wrap of radiation while sparing the normal tissues. Here's the treatment couch. The patient lays on here in the treatment position. This is the gantry. The gantry is used to actually treat the patient. The beam comes out of the gantry. Uh, the gantry rotates around and treats the patient from different angles. These arms here are the OBI arms. It's a fluoroscopic machine. It comes out, takes an image from the side, and then it'll take an image from the front. And those images are then overlapped outside with an image that we know exactly what it's supposed to look like and those are lined up and then you just push a button and the couch moves the patient in exactly the right position. The way radiation works, especially in prostate cancer, it delivers a very high energy transfer and that energy comes from the radiation beam into the cancer cell. That's absorbed by the DNA of the tumor and when it goes to the divide, it's damaged and dies. So every day for 45 days, I got up earlier than normal, drove to the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, had the good fortune to get the eight o'clock appointment. You wait till they call your name, you get up on the table, they get you positioned, the machine swings out and does its work, and your job is to imitate a rock and not move. The people you see every day are the radiation therapists. They're your real connection with your treatment. And you really get to be good friends with them. They're the people who are really upbeat and positive and they just, they give you a sense of, of hope and, and, and trust and, and confidence that what's going on is really gonna make you better. So I get my treatments in 10 or 12 minutes, drive here to work, and have a normal work day. I work at Varian Medical Systems, and no one at Varian knew that I'd not only been treated for prostate cancer, but had been treated on Varian equipment. I just saw Michael, and he's really doing great. He's back to work, and I found no evidence of disease persistence now. And his future is such that we just have to keep an eye on him for the next 10 or 15 years. At this point, all we're going to do is keep an eye on this every six months for the rest of my life. I'm not going to let this cancer beat me.